we share what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, do you mind if I record this for my people, or are you kind of shy? Okay, let's do it. So we've got it. So how do we learn more about this? I mean, the, the <clears throat> to update where we're at. Right now, we're so we've built a number of the the various micro homes around our campus. And let's see, why am I not seeing myself here? Can you guys see me? Mm -hmm. I can see you. That's yeah. Let me see if I can uh, tile this. Let's uh, change layout tiles. Okay. Uh, tiled. Okay. Uh, I, I can't see myself. Okay, but anyway. So so right now, we're. We're taking the CD go home, which is a, a, a house that's 1,000 square feet, two story model with an attached uh, carport. We're taking that to product release and training people to, to build these in our summer. Ex it's a summer of extreme design build program. So for three months, we're, we're going to teach people to be actual builders. We also have an enterprise track and, and the whole full range for people who want to work with open source ecology full time. So we're doing that. Now, our latest challenge is, so we're solving business problems. How do you do this, build a house very effectively? Um, and the idea here is that we're, we enable both skilled and unskilled labor, labor to participate. So for example, the house that I live in right now, we built in, in five days with 50 people, pretty much unskilled. And that's the kind of model we're developing where it's rapid swarm builds, um, whether it's, um, well, we, we focus especially on empowering anybody to make this work. Um, and actually recent, like I cannot get people to build, like last week we were, uh, we're trying to get a crew here, four out of 11 people showed up. So right. I, I'm actually thinking of going down, going to Kansas city and look, for, look for people under a bridge. Uh, but, uh, um, that's the problem we're trying to solve. So, so we know that we can run workshops like this, which are education immersion training workshops where pe people actually pay us to, to build that house. But as we roll this out in number, we got to solve the crew issue. So right now, that's kind of the, the thing we're trying to solve for right now because we haven't solved it yet. Um, and I was actually looking at, I'm also a Shuttleworth Foundation fellow. And today I actually found out that there's a fellow who works with prison populations. And I asked, hey, how about uh, we, we start training programs in prisons or people coming out for vocational training so we can get these significant crews that where the revenue model there, the business model relies on, a, on ra very rapid builds. Like five days we can do a whole house with 24 people because we focus on super simple design modularity and the stuff that you can build in parallel um, as opposed to a, a very much a linear process uh, with skilled trades where, where the average schedule is six months. Here we're talking about five days. Now, of course, there's gonna be inspection schedule which will probably stretch that out because because uh, inspection schedules will also come into this as we're building in real life outside of unzoned jurisdictions. So we have to allow for that. But but the point is we can uh, we can do very rapid builds and trying to do that and training training people. So this is the my call out is I mean I'd love to do stuff in Kansas City with this if there could be a prototype or something we can prototype or a real real house build more like that wouldn't necessarily call it a prototype more like a pilot or a real house because. Uh, as, as soon as we finish this one here, which we're in the middle of, we're going to say, okay, this is it. Uh, here's the product brochure and so forth. And we're ready to take this to prime time. Uh, and so like Martin, can you, can you tell us um, what, are, what are the materials that the house is made of and what is the ultimate uh, performance in terms of energy efficiency? Yeah, so the materials are it's standard stick frame construction right now, though we're moving to compressed earth block next year. But right now it's just framed light frame construction. Uh, it's $50,000 in materials uh, for the house for the 1000 square foot unit just for the materials. And as far as the performance we've got, we do have a lot of, <clears throat> uh, I mean, we're actually going to apply for the living building challenge. I don't know if you're familiar with that. But um, no. Th that's um, w we do have a standard option for off grid PV for photovoltaics. That's that's going to come as a regular option that anyone can get. And as far as uh, other things, we do have a like a polished concrete floor, which is also quite an ecological feature. Other than that, it's it's more solid than your normal stick frames, which require only two by fours. We use two by sixes. Um, okay. We have an EPDM roof. It's a flat roof structure. Um, the picture. Uh, let me let me just uh, text. Um, show you the or email it to us. 
Yeah, just put it in the chat box um, so you know <laughs> fully what we're talking about here. So what you see here, uh, let's see the chat. Where is that chat? Oh, it's not a, oh, there it is. Um, in that chat, you see what we built last year. That's the as built and on our, the two floor model there is uh, what we're building right now. That's in a very basic structure, oh, not, showing, not showing the um, attached garage. But we, okay. we document everything fully so you can actually download the, the full CAD and open source software and stuff like that. So it's absolute radical transparency. We call it actually distributive enterprise, meaning um, you're welcome to take all our blueprints, run with it. We publish the enterprise models. Go right. Ahead, run with it. Um, so right. far, nobody takes us on it because, I mean, it, it's, it's skilled work. It's skilled as in, like, there's people don't have any skills these days to <laughs> practical skills. Right. To nobody does. This. Entrepreneurial hands on skills are quite badly missing. For example, to tell you what, what we first published the compressed earth block press in 2008. I thought this would just like go all over the world and people would start businesses doing it. Nobody's running a business doing that. It's a professional grade machine that we sell for 10,000 bucks. Otherwise the nearest competitor costs like 52,000 bucks, you know? It's like And that's the co compressor. Is it's that called the compressor? Comp earth? Compressed earth block press. It's a machine that presses the block right from the soil underneath our feet here. Right. So that's relevant for anywhere. That's what we're going to deploy next year because we learned how to do that really efficiently too. We had a micro house build in Belize where we could lay block like every couple of seconds. We had a chain of people, unskilled people going. We were just laying that wall up like like mad. Uh, so we can do that too. But that's not the initial model, which is going to be stick frame because that's easier. Even though the lumber price so what is What are you high. doing with the price of, with construction prices going skyrocketing? That's, that's insane. And that's why we're actually focusing on getting an industrial grade sawmill up and running this year. We're putting that as a priority because we cannot <laughs> we cannot take the lumber prices being three times or, or whatever as high. Now, right. our material costs, when we did this, when we got the materials in November, they were we were at about 50K. It might be more like 60K right now. I don't, I haven't actually gone through the details. Right, right. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Okay. And, and do you have like the R values of, of, of your walls or anything like yeah, that? R forty for the roof, R nineteen for the walls. I mean, this is this okay. is well engineered. This is uh, twenty psf snow loads and and uh, ninety mile per hour winds, um, standard stuff. And we can actually increase that by a by a an enhanced uh, fastener schedule. So. And what do you do about the fact that the roofs are flat? Because those are yeah. like notorious problematic later yeah the, it's it, there's no such thing as a flat roof it's actually slightly slope and it's EPDM okay. Um, okay. so these kinds of roofs are I mean the technology is there these are these are well-known techniques so we're not inventing anything okay. new. got it so with yeah. and sorry but I'm geeking out on on this because I've been reading about it for a long time so when you do the compressed earth Sorry, um, reading about our work or about uh, uh, no reading general? about um, reading about different techniques for yeah. alternative housing right um so the compressed earth is not cob it doesn't no. have straw in it what do you do with moisture like you know humidity and stuff like that how do you how do you get rid of that with compressed this is not earth cob and it's between 300 and 1000 psi strong so this is very strong stuff it's stronger than cob it's like uh, but for that you're talking about unstabilized block yes they, those will turn into mud in the rain so uh, there's two strategies. One is to stabilize with up about 10 percent, five to 10 percent concrete, and then they're waterproof. Or you can do structures which have cladding on it, so you don't expose, you stucco it, or otherwise protect the outside from rain. If you use well, I was also just thinking block. about moisture gathering on the inside, like the walls weeping and stuff. Oh yeah. Well, this this stuff breathes. Yes, you have to take care of details on that. Now, okay. The thing is. Um, if you press the block with stabilized cement, stabilizing cement, you're talking about 40 cents per block costs. If you use unstabilized, they're like five cents a block. So there's a price difference, but but yeah, yeah. You're talking about all kinds of details that, yes, we um, were you aware solved of that. them. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I don't need to worry. Them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, may I ask what about your financing model? I don't want to ask you to divulge anything that is confidential, but um, we're not we're not in this sector ourselves yeah. and we're, we've been thinking about it for a long time because yeah. and we
try to imagine what we could bring to the party. But and I think one of the things is possibly that we have some relationships with banks that could be helpful. Yes. But uh, yes. what 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 are you doing financing wise? Are you building financing? in enough profit to move on to the next house? Or yeah, so the financial asking, financial model is fifty thousand. We, we want to sell these turnkey as a service. So fifty k for materials, fifty k builder fee. That's that's our model. From that we have revenue to grow. So it's a bootstrap funding model. Okay. Okay. So the people end up with a hundred thousand dollar mortgage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you got to consider land. That's not fifty thousand materials, fifty thousand service. Uh, right. Fee. You got to consider land and utility hookups if they're not off grid. Right. Okay. So, so you are, re are are you in any way working with the the people to help them get the mortgage in, the mortgage for this? We are we are gonna look at yeah we we are looking at that as in there there's different strategies. One is uh, so in, in on our team we do have some access to funding where we can say okay we can fund some some people's uh, loans to do this, uh, but the way it could work is you could get a a loan for land like say the land costs twenty five k. You have to come up with that money, but then you can refinance that into getting a construction loan. So that way, out of pocket, you have to have so enough collateral to get the land loan. But once you have the land, you can refinance that for a construction loan. So there, and at that point, um, with some clever refinancing, you can be out of zero out of pocket as you go through this adventure. So this could be made really ac accessible. Now, I uh, can't tell you the exact details step by step to that, but that's the general idea we're working on and we'd like to develop that. Um, okay. Because yes, okay. It's, it's just like anybody, anybody gets loans and, and financing, right? So we have to uh, be able to do that just like Habitat I mean, Habitat has sweat equity as one. Habitat for Humanity is a great model. They're exploding as far as I, I have read about them. Uh, they are doing really well, apparently. Like The number of houses that they're building for low-income people are apparently going through the roof. They're at that exponential curve phase of their growth. Well, yeah, there, we don't have enough house, We don't have enough affordable housing as a nation, so. Yeah. Okay, so um, how can we, um, what what would be helpful in terms of what we're doing at Bridging the Gap? Do you want to hear us a little, a little bit yeah, more yeah. about what we so, do? So tell me what what tell us what well, what you're involved in in Kansas City. So we we have uh, about 26 employees working on eight different programs that range mm -hmm. from urban forests to prairie restorations to recycling to business mm -hmm. sustainability, all of that. But the most related thing that we've done in the past six or seven years is we've been doing energy efficient energy and water efficiency works in income qualified neighborhoods so we're mm -hmm. actually in people's homes installing efficiency devices we've done okay. some weatherization okay. work like mm -hmm. we've uh, it, it was this was a small pilot project but we did like 40 houses we did the rim joist ceiling mm -hmm. in order to uh, keep that conditioned air escaping from the from the rim joist mm -hmm. which can cut utility bills by 25 percent so We've been doing work in the area of reducing inequitable utility bill burdens. Mm. And we have relationships, um, we've got strong relationships with the city of KCMO and some other people that have an interest in this, including Bank of America, for example, is one of our um, funders that we work with closely. Uh, and so for some time we've been aware of the affordable housing crisis, but we think that very few people are looking at affordability married to sustainability. So we, we're, we've looked at passive houses, et cetera. So we really don't have real estate expertise or building expertise. We have, we have a lot of relationships. We have a lot of volunteers. We have a pool of, in any given year, we'll probably uh, get 1,800 volunteers uh, working on different projects around the city. Um, so, it, it in a way, it, it kind of we're not absolutely sure that we should be in building houses, mm -hmm. but on the mm -hmm. other hand, we're seeing the desperate need for them, and we feel like 
the for-profit development world is not going to address this need. No, not. So, and it's, particularly this intersection of sustainability and affordability. So, yeah. what what I would was hoping was that we could actually get away with building a fifty to sixty thousand dollar house, like a straw bale house, things like that. What what's your thought about that? Can you get can you get that price point down any further? Uh, yeah, we can yeah. once we start making our lumber or block or compressed earth block. I believe we can do it. Part of it is that we're uh, part of the development is actually developing a three D printer that runs on waste plastic. So so we build three D printers. We actually sell three D printers as well, and we're going to be building a four by four by eight foot larger printer that can actually print the construction lumber or entire panels like this house I'm in right now. It's panelized four by eight foot panels so we can print them so so once we develop some of that I think the, the costs can go down and in the immediate sense um, if people are interested in micro home idea then we can probably get close to like half half the cost if you've got half half the structure uh, yeah so you're saying like 60k for for what for all-in cost yeah I mean yeah yeah for all-in that would ideally yes and, and I'm sure For you're what aware size, of other what, what size? Well, I mean, uh, if you believe the if you believe the conventional square footage, it doesn't give you very much square footage. But I mean, there have been projects that we've looked at, like the 20k project at University of Alabama, yeah. where they're they're of course using a lot of labor, a lot of free labor. Um, so I don't know yet. I don't know yeah, what that studio lot is. Is a great example of that but their costs are lower. They've got very simple design. I like it. It's just basic design. They're also in a warm climate, so they're not going to have all the inf insulation yeah. and all of that stuff and probably yes, exactly. not the tornadoes. And not only, not only so, they, well, they probably have the heat that we have too. I mean, we have both extremes. So, yeah, so we don't really right. know yet what, what it is that we're, we're thinking of doing and we're not even sure that we can be effective at it. Mm -hmm. What what is your perception that we might be able to help you the most with? Well, uh, for one thing is uh, just asking about labor pools or, or people that, uh, for one, if you have any people that want to get trained in this as builders, we have the training for that. We have both an apprenticeship, which is six months, or a, a three-month training program, and we can do scholarshiping on that. So if you can uh, send candidates who want to build so entrepreneurial people from KC, from disadvantaged communities, from anywhere. Uh, I want to see. So, sorry, Keisha, is, is that how you say your name? Yes. Keisha, like, what? I mean, what do you think about? Um, do you do you run into people who are running out of can uh, getting out of high school level? So tech school after high school level. This is a thing where we're saying, hey, hey, man, let's change the world uh, with uh, teaching entrepreneurship to anybody. Like we're, we're not trying to um, see because um, I think to to this point in our history, we've been serving a lot of the like people from all over the world come to our place here. And it's kind of the elites, the techies and all that. But we want to like after COVID I actually started thinking a lot about, OK, we got to start with the local communities and, and train people for jobs like like tech school level and stuff so that's something we have uh, we are developing and we could use candidates that can do that do you pay say again can you pay do we pay is it pay pay this is this is apprenticeship with apprenticeship and the program no it's not it's not paid right now but what we can do is do pretty much full ride scholarships if we can get the person to stay and pay that off like that's the way well, we but here's can... the challenge. When you say disadvantage, yeah. when you say, you know, homeless, you, we have to remember that people yeah. want to be paid. There's a reason, you know, when we use words like disadvantage, we have to be honest about that, right? Okay. So then my challenge for you would be, what are the programs? Is there a way for your company to look at maybe uh a nonprofit or someone that would go after Sponsor. some grant funding to yeah. support the dollars, right? Yeah. I don't know if it has to be much if you're willing to give them board, you know, and things yeah. like that. That's what so, I was going to ask. Do you provide room and board? Yeah, we can do that. We have facilities on site. 
I'm not going to say it's not going to work, but when you're talking about the elites, and just to be quite honest, you're a technical kind of guy. So in my headspace, I'm sitting here like this is a lot for me to take in. And I'm listening, and I mean, as someone who lives in the community in which she grew up in, I can see why it would be challenging to get individuals to come and want to be committed and, and serious about it. Because this is like going over their head. This is like really going over their head. Uh, but it's not that people wouldn't do it, right? Like, I, I definitely think that there's a space there. For me, I need to see it. I'm a visual person. Yeah. So I need to like see it physically. And I need to like understand like what the entire process is and, and and how do you communicate that to someone who's looking for career readiness, mm -hmm. right? So that's essentially what you're trying to say is like, no, you really can become an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur but the person is gonna wanna know what the end game is. When you say, oh, I can become an entrepreneur, tell me what that like means on the back end, right? If I'm gonna come for free, now you'll give me a scholarship, which is great, I'm going to learn a great skill. How does that transition, you know, to me being an entrepreneur? Because uh, you can't dangle that word around without, I, you know, I want to know that the, that the back end stuff. Like, give me, what does that mean for me? Like, can I come home and do this? Am I going to be able to create my own company? Like, you know, those are the yeah, things I mean, that you're going to push out a little bit too. Yeah, a quick answer to that is, yeah, you're going to start your own company. We can support you in providing you leads. Like, I think OSC's role will be, we'll be doing marketing work. So for example, if there's somebody who, there's, there's a client who wants to build in Kansas City, go ahead, here, here it is, uh, we'll give it to you, uh, that kind of deal. So, so, but the person would have to learn enough entrepreneurial savvy, i.e. they're gonna be responsible for actually working on that project and taking it to completion. That's the kind of level we're looking at. Or otherwise, uh, we're gonna hire some people to work like say we get a client wherever and we travel you know we take our van of people and we do the build pretty rapidly um, we can hire some people we 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 would like to create more of the entrepreneurs than hiring people because that's the way we think we can spread this to communities everywhere but it's really that it's it's the idea it's like look we're not gonna I don't want to hire you. I'll tell the person I don't want to hire you I want you to go to your community and Tell me a person is not going to want this $100,000 house when everything else is going to be... I can tell be... you plenty, Morrison. So I can tell you plenty. Like, when you're talking about affordable, this is not affordable to me. Let me just be quite clear Yeah. since you were talking. Oh, so funny. you just told me that it's going to cost 50000 yeah. for you to build, 50000 builder fee. Well, the, the land itself, Morrison, depending on what community. Now, if I go and get someone from my community, 3rd District of KCMO... The land is gonna cost about twenty or thirty thousand dollars because yep. land is not cheap right now because of gentrification, yep. Yep. right? Yep. You're telling me that yep. I'm gonna have to do utility hookups. So, Marston, the likelihood that I'm gonna get one of these homes in my neighborhood is actually really low. So, it's not as attractive as you think it is for someone. Okay. When you say that you want to work with the black and brown community and get them to learn about this, so you can't. The, the, we gotta figure out the language, right? Yeah. It's a language challenge that you're going to have. But I'm going to tell you, this is quite expensive. I'm almost thinking in my head, but in my head, I'm calculating like, oh, my God, this is like $175,000. Well, when you look at black and brown communities historically, half of us can't get a $175,000 loan. And you talked about refinancing. That's an educational challenge that you're talking about. So we, we got some things that we got to work out. It, again, I, I understand the idea that people yeah. have a desire to get into the community. Yeah. And, and like, you, we got this product. This is cool. Like, come on. We want to see it. But listen, Marcy, in my head, where I come from, I'm like, now, wait a minute. It all sounds too good to be true. Yeah, it is. So, but, but here, but uh, listen to this. So you're not going to build for maybe not initially for or like if the price is too high for 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 the disadvantaged community build for the white guy next door would that uh -uh, Martin, but you can't do that to us and you gotta stop saying the disadvantaged because first of all we ain't all disadvantaged let's start there let, let me just say that secondly why come we can't build for our own community this sounds like something positive for us so when you say affordable, we got to yeah. be careful in how we communicate that that message. No, that's good. That's uh, thank you for the feedback. 
the expression. Yeah, listen. Um, no, <laughs> that's but, what I'm here for. That's yeah, what I'm here no, for. That's, I that's do right. want to see what you do. I, I do have an interest in seeing. Like I want to, I want to visually see this. Yeah. Like I would like to come to where you are and see what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. It will again also help me because I'm not speaking for everybody. There is always someone that is out there that is looking for something really cool to get into that has been untapped, right? Yeah. yeah. And so we want to get to that individual. Yeah. And there's yeah. somebody creative enough that can take this on. So someone Martin, has to believe that they can learn. That's the basic thing. And that's and there's gonna be a, like a a thing like. Like who me, I can do it. Like for example, for me, I could not ever imagine I'd be doing what I'm doing right now. I'm building tractors, I'm building houses and stuff like that. It's, I thought like only professionals or whoever could do that. But I taught, taught myself this and, and now I'm saying, oh, I learned this, other people can learn it too. But that's the kind of breakthrough that does have to happen. Yeah. So, so Martin, yeah. Uh, on 3D printing, yeah. we Keisha and I met with a company in Austin I can't think of the name of it right now. That's supposedly the only people in the U.S. that are doing 3D printed housing, which you just said you're doing. Uh, you did you build your own model for yeah, a 3D printer? Yeah, we designed and built our own 3D printers. Now the deal is how much are they for for well, a housing scale? So so first let's explain the difference between the two. So one is the the 3D printer that shoots mud out, like the Austin people or concrete. Here we're talking about just plastic from the waste stream. So you grind down plastic from trash and you turn it into 3D print, printing filament and you can print, if you get quantitative about it, 80 pounds, like with a four printer, four head printer, you print 80, 80 pounds of plastic per 24 hour period. So that's using known open source technology that we can do right now, okay? Uh, the other guys are doing more of the, the concrete spitting printers, which um, it's a little different. For us, the kind of printer we're talking about, maybe about $5,000 or so for, for the four by eight scale kind of a 3D printer. And you would have to have a shredder plus filament maker to spit, to get you that filament that you can print very fast with. So, so we focus on these larger kinds of uh, industrial grade 3D printers, but yes, they're absolutely open source. Now, the biggest we've built so far is the uh, just 18 inches by you know just just kind of like desktop stuff 18 inches but we use a model we use a method of building that's it's like lego blocks so it's scalable and um so we can actually build a much larger one because we have a, a building block system that allows you to do that uh pretty much the same same design just scaled up we've worked out how to do that that's that's the value some of the value we're bringing we're focusing on modularity and scalability as some of the key elements which allow you this building block approach that you can now start building crazy stuff. And so could you essentially get into the, um, I'm gonna, until Kristen jumps on, I have a question about the this 3D printing. Yeah. So could you essentially build out smaller homes for like the, the houseless population? I think- Is that the kind of- I think a thing where you know we're talking about price breakthroughs, yeah, print out a trash and you can mix like sawdust in it uh, to make it look like wood actually. That would be a way that you can really smash this barrier probably 5x to 10x. So you're okay. not talking 50,000, you might be talking right. 5 or 10. Oh wow. Okay, and so how long did those take to like build out? <laughs> uh, so if you t take um, take one printer, so it's very easy to do like four heads. If you've seen a 3D printer that's got this print head, it's pretty easy okay. to do like four heads. And using known open source technology, you can do uh, four of those heads like that that each print 20 pounds per day. So it's 80 pounds. Now, how much how much house weight do you want? I mean, they'll, they'll be according, but you can put, there's two things you can do. One is, you can put on more print heads, so you're printing more in parallel, or more printers, each of which costs you 5K. So if you, it would be more so sustainable, I, right? Then well, it would be more sustainable than what they are trying to attempting to build with these tiny homes. Uh, well, we li we did micro houses a plenty, and we lived that one. And my wife said, uh, "No, no more." I mean, right. they're tight, right? So, um, so we've experienced that. So you'd probably want to start with like a 500 square foot unit, like maybe half the size of the the rosebud, the model that we've got. We're we're starting with a thousand square feet, but yeah, 500 square feet. I mean, 
each one of those walls would be like 150 pounds. Uh, and for the 500 square foot model, you'll need like 24 wall units. So 24 times, like it would take you like a month to print it using one of those printers. Oh wow! That, that goes that goes by itself. It's it's automated. It's it's robotic automation saving the world. That's a safe space for like the houseless population, right? I'm talking about the transient. You know, they like come and go, and you just need these like. Like 256, yeah, yeah, I mean, 256 square feet, uh, or even, you know, 14 by 14 square feet is, would be comfortable for one person uh, to get housed and out of the elements, I'd say. So, yeah, you could do smaller things. That, that's, it's almost low-hanging fruit, but the thing is, like, nobody, um, there's nobody doing these larger scale uh, open source versions. There's plenty of very expensive printers, like, if you go into the industry standards, you're talking a couple of hundred thousand bucks for a printer like that, which we can do for about five thousand. So this is like one of those. Sounds crazy until you kind of see what it's all about, but it, I think it's quite real. No, I like where you're going. I'm just asking about the houses because also, I mean, that conversation is on par with Kansas City, right? So Kansas City is looking. Kansas City, meaning the city of Kansas City, they are looking for you know, all of these different versions of housing for the houseless. And so, you know, that is where I know you're looking at a larger scale, but those smaller scale spaces. Oh, I'm into that. I mean, We'd be into that because that's, that's just a scale down of the, the bigger one. Yeah. Marchin, I didn't hear how much a, how much is a printer. Are you selling those printers? Oh, the printers <laughs> right now we're selling the small printers for for a thousand bucks, but the larger printer that would do the four by four by eight panels, I estimate, would cost about five thousand, and that we're going to be building out in the next uh, in the two months. About we'll start okay. building those. So what does the thousand dollar one do? It's just small. It's only got an eight by eight inch bed, so you can print things that are only eight by eight by eight inch. But okay. I mean, think think about like Legos. If you print like bricks of plastic, but the thing is, unless you have the open source shredder filament maker. Uh, which doesn't really exist exist in a it doesn't exist yet uh, unless you have that the, the filament is very expensive it's 20 bucks a pound for a roll of, or 20 bucks a kilo for a film so that would be a very expensive house so you got to go down to the waste stream which then you're talking about like five cents a pound okay yeah so uh, uh Martin, what is what's this fifty k builder fee? Especially if you can build a, a house in a week. No, what, what is that? What, who gets fifty k? Uh, that would be OSC for about a thousand hours of work. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's I mean that's uh, yeah that's that's the current model. We thousand is the current conservative estimate. I think we can get it down to five hundred. But um, the idea is that the design is optimized for. It's kind of like the digital model where you have everything in CAD and there is no mystery like you don't it doesn't work like where an architect gives blueprints to a to a builder and they just kind of wing it a lot of material waste right. and all this this is all designed up front so it's designed to be very efficient like the plumbing is inside the walls uh, the utilities are inside the walls so it's super efficient and with a with a focus on not requiring skilled skilled work to do it so that DIY people can do it so if you do have that 50k, you can build it for for that. If you put it for 50k in materials, if you use your own labor, which you can. And, but in, and also, if you're if you're doing several different of the same model, if you're just replicating the same model over and over again, doesn't that builder fee go way down? Uh, yeah, yeah. In principle, it does. I mean, we we have to work out. We have not done the 50,000 yet. I mean, that's that's the first milestone, and I imagine it would it would go down. Uh, once okay, we get so that would help out. a lot with price, Keisha. Okay, well, I feel like uh, we've only got a few minutes left, but mm -hmm. a couple of things. Um, we're not only are we interested, but I think the whole Kansas City community is interested in this in this in your work. We do have space, Martin, in Kansas City. We have two good-sized six thousand square feet feet of office space. If if you wanted to experiment in Kansas City, I think for, we could be very helpful to you from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. And even if we weren't doing anything on the project ourselves, we can we can help make connections for you, et cetera. So yeah. uh, 
but but definitely we we need to um, go put our thinking caps on and figure out what it is that we'd be willing, what it is that we'd be able to risk from a financial standpoint, um, and also just what is it that we're bringing to the party strategically. Mm -hmm. and so this is like a an entry into a new a new area for us. Yeah. yeah. So. I really appreciate your taking the time today to give us just you know the sketch the outlines of what you're doing. Yeah, I think it's incredible what you're doing. I love it, um, uh, and I feel like you know we could work to find a more kind of optimal space price ratio. Maybe it's yeah. you know 750 feet or something like that. I don't know, but um, I. I think that we need to maybe get back to you and have the next step be with us, yeah. unless you decide that you're going to work in Kansas City and then you just let us know and we'll we'll help grease the skids for you. Yeah, like uh, the idea would be if you guys find a, find a client that's that's right now we're doing the thousand square foot model that that's something that's a product that we're trying to roll out. If there's any pilots you want to do on that with somebody who not necessarily in the in a place that can afford it, right? So uh, if there's any clients like that, we'll be open to that. We're, we're going to be publishing that, that announcement basically for house pre-orders pretty soon. But also in the immediate sense, the other pressing question for us, for us is how do I find 24 people? We can pay 20 bucks an hour um, right now. Where would I get 24 people in Kansas City that can work and, and show up? But you have to have them come up to where you are in our north. We could drive them up. We can take a van up. Van up. I, I is, think is that realistic, or is it over the summer? Like well, we're talking about the next three, three weeks. Sustain. Next three weeks. Okay. <laughs> the next three weeks. <laughs> but you School can pay twenty four, twenty dollars an hour for how long? For full days. For it, I need twenty four people times five days times eight hours each day. That's pretty much what okay. we need at this I point. I know a few people. Why aren't you just going through an employment agency if it's that, if $20 an hour is a good a good uh, price? Uh, well, first they wanted 25 and second, they could only get like six people. They're saying that nobody wants to work after the COVID checks. I, I couldn't oh. get people. Uh, St. Joe, that was. Maybe in Kansas City, that would be different, but I haven't gone there that way yet um do you know any places like is day labor a thing or do you know anything about that uh -huh. day labor yeah. is a thing people That's ready funny. people people uh labor ready it's called people ready now uh -huh. they even have an online system that you go into now oh uh, mm -hmm. let me see if i can't find that app they have an app now that you're supposed to go into mm -hmm. uh, they're and also like 39th street i think it's called people ready Marchin, I've got to jump off okay. for a three o'clock, but I okay. will be in touch with you, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for taking thank the you. time to explain this to us. Thanks, Kristen. Let me see if I can't find this person. I hope we can work together. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, so Let me see if I can't find this. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Keisha, you, you have a, you run, is that a community center you run in? Is that, is that like part of a bridging the gap are you at their offices or where, where are you there no i'm in someone else's office mm -hmm. <laughs> because my office sometimes it was echoing this morning okay. and it was driving me crazy but i needed to take meetings yeah yeah but they do it I, yeah it's like a community center mm-hmm and this is okay so job stack is what it's called when you're wanting to work with day labor it's What's an it app that you have to go to. Job Stack. S A T A C K. Job Stack. And it's People Ready's app. And you go into there, and that's how you get started if you mm -hmm. want to find day labor. Okay. Do you know what kind of rates they have there? Anything? Does it say anything about it? No. What did she say? It was like $21? Yeah, we could do 20 Think you'd have to talk to her. Yeah. Uh, have you called? Uh, I ain't trying to be funny, but have you called like Hope and Faith? 
No, I haven't. Um, I don't know. Hope and faith. You could call it hope and faith when you're talking about the underserved and uh, homeless population. They have that population. They may have a few people that may have an interest in making a few dollars really quickly. Mm -hmm. Is you also have restart. Restart. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Oh, there's another guy. Ooh, what is his name? Westside Community Action Center? Huh? I ran into Westside Community Action Center. Is that something you know? Oh, yeah, that's the CAN Center. I don't know how much they can help, but you can explore that with them. Hmm. Have you reached out to um, schools that have sustainability programs that won't be in class this summer? Um, no, I haven't, haven't done that because this, this is more like for, for like right now, um, but yeah, I haven't. That's a thing for more for like um, people that might want to be interested, might be interested in the program, the training itself. Yeah. Oh, there's this guy. Can I send you his information? His name is York Wilson. He has a, a workforce development program. York Wilson? Uh-huh. His, his, his company is called Strategic Workforce Development. Mm-hmm. Keisha, are we CC'd on the email that we got for this meeting there? You're on there, so maybe we can... Follow up if you have any uh, any of the. Do they have any phone numbers for these people, or just Google them, look look them up? Keisha, I think we're going to just invite you here to check out what we've got and you can you can help us figure out the language because you said about the la figuring out the language so we can communicate. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. Well, you know, language is important. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> language is one of the things that keeps people from being as diverse as they would like to be. And so I'm always there to help. <laughs> Make sure that people know that, well, there's just a certain... So, I sent you York's information. Uh, he actually would probably be a good resource. Okay. He works with, you know, when you talk about the different populations, like uh -huh. those that made tr the transitional population from prison. He mm -hmm. works with a lot of individuals that may, you know, he may be able to uh, secure... Mm -hmm. I don't know, Becky. It's actually got me thinking, like, of a few people that we know. Like, would they, you know, I don't know. You mean our employees? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm We have a few green stewards that I wonder if they would be interested. If I, if I come down with the van next next Thursday, how many can you pack up in there? Listen. Let's talk I about that. Yeah, I can't pack Let's up talk anybody. About that first. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, we can't pack up anybody. Um, they would have a lot of questions. So I mean, okay. I would have an ask of you. Can you put something down? You know, yeah. uh, that you know can be shared with people. Yeah. Um. Like what they'll be doing, how many yeah. hours per day, what they'll learn. Okay, I can so I can pass that pass that some info on. Mm -hmm. That will help us out a lot. Okay, that'll be good. That'll be a, a good <clears throat> good thing to do. Any if other? I can think of anybody else, I you know I definitely will send them your way. Okay, that sounds good. Um. Yeah, but you have a tight turnaround. <laughs> what's the pressure for the next few weeks? What's going on right now that you need help with? Well, I mean, we're finishing the 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 Rosebud two story floor. We we're, we've got the foundation and some wall modules built already. We, we're just working on it right now. 
You want to get it as soon, out as soon as possible so you can see a finished house of the new model. Like I, I live in a model you, you've seen on a page of the CD Go Home. This is CD Go Home 2. The next generation. Oh, that's your home? Yeah. With the pool? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that was that was an aquaponic greenhouse. My partner's got back issues. We turned it into a pool, and it's um, basically a demonstration house that we we take people on for tours and stuff like that. So we'll be offering tours for this house and the city go home too, and stuff like that. And there's the scene in the winter right now. It's actually built up because because the houses are designed for for expansion. So it, when you'll see it right now, it'll actually be expanded quite a bit. Like the, the thousand square foot model has got pre-framed walls such that you can add readily. You don't have to like rip the whole house down. You can add, it's called incremental housing. So you can build a small one. Like, like one way to get the cost down is say start, you can go down and start with a 256 square foot module and then build up in, in 16 by 16 square foot, 16 by 16, which is 256. You can build in modules like that in increments to uh, as your needs grow. So that's the idea. So we can definitely do something that's smaller up front. Now I just know that um, a normal family it'll be a little tight for that. But for a homeless person, you could probably be okay with 200 square feet uh, as a, as a decent place. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. I will continue to send you resources as I think about them. If you could, you know, provide us some language as okay. to the need and what they'll be doing, okay. I think that will be helpful. Yeah. Uh, but the person I sent you, I would definitely call and reach out to him. Okay. Uh, and see if he has. I do know he does work as a workforce development agency, so he does look for jobs for people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and opportunities for people. Yeah. That sounds good. Sounds uh, good. Do you have any a agencies around you that that have people who need community service hours? Um, I believe the, I guess the courthouse would have that, wouldn't they? Uh huh. I would reach out to them about co individuals who have community service, who have a need for community service. Where did you say you're based out of? Maysville, Missouri. How long? How long is a, of a drive is that from Kansas City? One hour. One hour north. What's the? Are you closest to Kansas City? Uh, what oh, is St. Joe? St. Joe uh -huh. is, is half an hour. Yep. Um, when you talk oh, about yeah. Keisha, when you said community service hours, you mean? Uh, us functioning in the capacity of a of a nonprofit organization, so so people would actually do this as working for a nonprofit organization. And no, what I'm saying is, is that you know, for individuals that have gotten in trouble, who need some type of hour, it could. I mean, I guess you would have to function as a nonprofit, and yes, they would get hours served mm -hmm. for their. You know, it's required. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not from a school capacity, but yeah, from like a jail capacity. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> but um, I would think that St. Joe would have a program like that. To be quite honest with you, St. Joe, I bet their court system does have it. Yeah, I, I've heard about something like that within the courthouse here. I can check in with those with the courthouse. You definitely people. should. Huh. I mean, I'm gonna go back to Becky for a second here. You really should be reaching out to Northwest Missouri State. That's actually where I graduated from. They have a huge environmental lens for future. All of those people who come down there, you know. Uh, what's the environmental what program? They have an environmental program, uh, uh, Northwest Missouri State. They're a huge ag uh, school, so seems to me they're not that far away. No, if you're an there. hour outside of St. Joe, Maryville was an outside of outside an hour outside of St. Joe, so seems to me like it could be some some good resources there too. Uh, but that's in the, the future. One in, the one in Maryville. Uh huh. Okay. That's in the future. Yeah. That doesn't sound like a for right now thing, but I would definitely call Maysville Court in St. Joe to see what they have as well. That's a good idea. 
All right, I'm going to get off because any other time spent, you're going to have to start paying. We're going to be on the clock here. That's <laughs> it. Right. Okay. Nice to meet Michelle, you. Becky, it's you. nice to meet you. Good thank to meet you. you. Bye. We'll thank find you. the language. All right. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.